Hello indie game fans, love me a good Steam sale since of course, getting great games for a good price is great for my wallet. You will notice that there are a couple of fan requests here, so if you are keen for another video or two on the sale, do ask away in the comments below. But here we go with 10 more indie game recommendations for the Steam Summer Sale 2019. Ever had a game that was so good, but you didn't feel like playing at the time of release? Well, Celeste was one such game for me. The critically acclaimed platformer about the metaphorical and literal climbing of a mountain to face your inner fears and demons had such an awesome reception last year, winning awards and the hearts and minds of many people. However, I wasn't quite up to playing a difficult platformer at the time, but I think I am ready now. This is quite a beautiful game, with the pastel colours in certain areas standing out, but don't be fooled, it is very challenging from what I have heard. However, there are many accessibility options that gives you the choice to make the game easier without guilting the player, so that's nice and in line with the theme. A game which self-describes as rhythm violence, Thumper is a rhythm game with a very traditional, literal note highway where you play as a space beetle going through the levels and even fighting giant bosses. The music isn't exactly traditional, having more of an industrial or percussion feel, but that is exactly what makes it unique and really fits in with the aesthetics. Another one which was well received, so worth a look for 5 bucks. Cosmic Star Heroine is my go-to recommendation for indie JRPGs since number 1, I love the developer and their work, and number 2, it is an excellent modern JRPG which looks very 16-bit but has modern tweaks and systems. A fantastic sci-fi world with an intriguing story of corruption and betrayal, play as a secret agent gone rogue on a quest to save the galaxy. There are multiple playable characters, all of which feel unique and interesting, as well as your variety of biomes and locales. One of my top 10 games of 2017. This one is for Cumming, who requested a happy farming game. While I have covered many such games before, you guys will be familiar with the commonly cited ones such as Stardew Valley and My Time at Porsche, which does have no value in repeating them. Fantasy Farming Orange Season is another such farming game, but do note that it is still in early access. All your basic farming mechanics are in place, such as growing crops, raising animals, increasing friendship levels with the villagers and so on, there is an increased focus on handcrafted wilderness areas such as deserts, lakes, caves and so on, the ability to tame and domesticate wild animals and even for NPC characters to follow you around. Looks pretty good with a steady stream of updates.
The whimsical puzzle adventure game Pico Nico was released earlier this year and I had my eye on it ever since then. It is a bright, cartoony world with a cast of memorable characters and writing and humour which is top notch. A low stakes game about exploring and uncovering weird, unique, and hilarious aspects is the spark of joy that I need, so very much looking forward to digging into this one. Hazel Heart asked for a multiplayer game to play with friends, so I think No Heroes Here is a good pick. A co-op castle defense game which controls like a platformer, work together to fend off invading armies by firing and cleaning cannons, as well as crafting ammo from raw materials. Pixel art is great here and really looks like fun with friends. Wishmere is a brawler fighting game where you play as the heroes of an ancient order standing between the world and the malevolent evil force. While technically a fighting game, the commands are easy to execute with no complex button presses and with 7 playable characters and up to 4 player co-op, this might bring back a little of that Castle Crashers feel. Also, due to its roots, there is a versus mode as well, so perhaps an alternative fighting game type experience to check out. Gorogoa is a stunning hand-drawn game about manipulating panels in order to solve the puzzle. I am frequently floored by how impressive art can be in games and this is another standout example since everything is so gorgeous and hand-drawn. Goragoa is the name of an imaginary creature that the developer had in his youth and was chosen as the title since it is meant to be accessible, transcending language barriers, which also resulted in no text in this game. Great puzzle design and surprisingly, a narrative thread through the levels makes this a must play. Dragon Cliff is a semi-idle RPG 
about running a guild of adventurers as you take them on expeditions, defeating monsters, leveling up, crafting equipment, upgrading buildings, and so on. Idle games are an intellectual curiosity to me since the math that feeds into these games is quite a fascinating study, whether the systems progress linearly or exponentially, and how ascension mechanics feed into the game design as a whole. Excellent one of these with many progression systems to interact with, and the feeling of constant progression is what hooks you. The Messenger was another highlight of the year that I didn't get around to, but I have decided to take the plunge. With a game very reminiscent of Ninja Gaiden, the challenging action platforming hides many secrets, one of which shown off in the trailer is the ability to swap from 8 to 16 bit, but there are plenty more. I've heard slightly spoilery things about the story and writing, which seems crazy and very fun, so gonna jump into this as well. For more of the best indie games, do check out the previous video or click on the recommended playlist and I will see you after the jump.